It's my privilege to introduce to you, this is Pastor Reggie Whidden from Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama, correct. And uh, you're quite a ways from home. Yeah, yep, a little bit. Up in the, the uh, north country now, huh? No, north country. I, I got here yesterday and it was actually cold. Yeah. It was cold. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. We're out here in the audience, my wife takes my coat. Yeah. She's so cold in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Well, you shouldn't tell these folk. They think it's summertime They think here. this is summer. Yeah. You know, one time I, I lived in Minneapolis. Oh, you did? I did. And I learned that their uh, winter time is July 4th. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can be cold. Can be cold. Minneapolis is right. We uh, had the privilege of meeting uh, Pastor Reggie this past year. And I want you to tell a little bit. We won't take too much time on it. Some of the folk have heard your testimony. Okay. But someone gave you one of these books. Uh, the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments twice, twice removed. removed last year. Someone, yes. he has a church and a, a church school, 120 yes. or so 120, students. 20. 120 students. And uh, someone, uh, one of the students is Adventist, or maybe several of them. Right. They, uh, Father gave you a book and you read it. Correct. And it had an impact on your life. It had a great impact, Danny. Actually, it more than an impact, it changed my life. Wow. It absolutely changed my life. Okay. I'm not the same man that I was a year ago. By the way, uh, yeah. this weekend is my birthday. I'm a year old today. Oh. <laughs> and it's true. <clears throat> All yeah. right. Yeah. Ten Commandments weekend. Ten Commandments weekend a year ago. Um, right about that time is when the book was given to me. Right before the weekend, but this weekend yeah. is actually when I read the book. Wow. And, we may have uh, sing happy birthday to him after a while, birthday. huh? As a one-year-old, we didn't have a cake or anything. Didn't have I'm a sorry. Cake. That's all right. We didn't think That's about right. it. Tell us a little bit about then how you, you've just said to the folks here and the folks at home, I'm sure there are a lot of people just like yourselves now. Okay. You're, you're not a, what we call at home a, a backwoods preacher. You didn't just no. decide one day, I no. think I'll be a preacher. You actually have a doctor's degree in theology. That's correct. And so you, you went to school uh, for a long time. Right. But you never really, it just didn't occur to you about the Sabbath. You just didn't understand about the Sabbath, or what was it? Well, then how do it you get a? Do I'm yeah. sorry to say sorry. this. How do you get a doctor's degree in something and not understand the Sabbath? Well, I've, I wanted That's to ask. What? I wanted to ask those Is that professors. Too blunt? Uh, Is that no, too? no, I wanted to ask my, my professors the same thing. How, how did I get this doctor degree and I didn't understand that? No, okay. it wasn't that I didn't understand it. I just was never really exposed to it. Okay. I was just never really exposed to. So Sabbath. when you read "Keep the Sabbath Holy," you didn't think about the seventh day Sabbath. No, I never thought about seventh day Sabbath. We were keeping Sunday um, as our day of worship, and I just okay. thought that's the way we did it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now tell tell us a little bit about before yes. and and the the after. You said it's changed your life. In it what has. ways has it changed you? Well, first of all, uh, um, I, I have always had a great admiration for the nine commandments. Okay. All right. <laughs> For the nine commandments. I, I just never understood the fourth one of the okay. ten. Right. And so um, I, I've, I've studied and uh, observed the, uh, the other nine. I just didn't pay attention to the, to the fourth one. But when I grabbed hold of the truth on the fourth commandment, it just absolutely, <clears throat> totally revolutionized my life. I'm not the same man that I was a year ago. Wow. I'm not the same man. Amen. Uh, my walk with God is sweeter. It's deeper. The presence of God is in my life in a way that I have never known it before. I read the scripture and, and the scripture begins coming alive to me. And it has done that in many, many yeah. times before. But I pick up the scripture now and I see things that I've read before that didn't understand. And now I, I just understand it. Wow. It's just an amazing of how God's imparting to me revelation and knowledge of his word. Things that I'd never really known before. So... And not just on the Sabbath, but other things. On other things. So yeah. you, you feel like this, this understanding, I mean, that's a big statement. But that's a big statement. You're saying this understanding of the Sabbath and, and God's truths are opening your eyes to other truths. Brother, I'll tell you what, I, I know that's a bold statement, but that's absolutely true. Yeah. Once my wife and I read this book, Ten Commandments Twice Removed, and we were convinced that this book was scripturally sound, and we embraced it, at that moment in time, as we embraced it, it was as if the Spirit of God just started pouring on us. Wow. Pouring on us, brother. And, and it's a sovereign thing. Yeah. It's nothing we've done. We're not doing anything different than what we were doing before, other than we're just walking in the truth of this fourth commandment. Yeah. Wow. And brother, people now start coming into, into our congregation, and, and, and um, they have said to us, visitors would come for the first day, and they would say, Wow, there's something here. We, feel the, we felt the presence of God when we walked in the door. Wow, isn't that amazing? Yeah. 
And, and I'll just tell you, that's because of the presence of God, and that's the sovereignty of God that, that he, he blesses those that walk in His Ten Commandment truths. And now I've got all ten there that I can work with. <laughs> got all ten. It's an amazing story, and it's amazing how it's changed your life. But yes. now, tell me about the impact. Of course, you have a church. Yes. Some of you may have heard Reggie. I heard yesterday we did a pre-taped uh, interview with you. But you said you were a preacher. You had this big church school, right. 120 students or so, right. but you, your church wasn't so big, but you, it, you were praying, Lord, I don't want a bigger church. Right. I don't really want a pastor. I don't care about a bigger church. Right. But after you learned this truth, the Lord reprimanded you. Oh, absolutely. The Lord reprimanded me, and he said, don't ever say that again. Don't ever pray that this church doesn't grow. Well, he, he told me. He, said, he kind of thumped me a little bit. You know how the Lord would do that, thumped <laughs> yeah. you a little bit, and he said, it's not your church. 